Our next learning objective is recording payroll and payroll taxes. So there's three journal entries for recording payroll. Now so far what we've done is we've taught you how to calculate gross pay, how to calculate the deductions, and how to calculate the net pay for the employees. But notice we have not entered them into the journal yet. Now is where we're going to be entering them in the journal. And instead of entering them in the journal for each employee, we enter them in the journal for each pay period. So the first of the three payroll entries, we're going to use the payroll register to record salaries, expense, and employee withholdings. In the second journal entry, we will record the employer tax expense and employer tax payables. And then the third entry is the easiest. We will record the payments to the employees, which means we will decrease salaries payable and decrease cash. So let's look at each of these in detail. So the first journal entry, remember, is recording salaries expense and the employee withholding. So basically the first journal entry is the employee data for, for payroll. So of course we're going to enter the date and our only debit is gross pay. Now the name of the account will probably be something like wages and salaries expense or wages expense or salaries expense. The main thing is it's the expense for paying employees and make sure you remember that it is the gross pay. So next, as credits, we will list the required deductions. So what are the required deductions for employees for payroll? It's FIT. And the reason we use FIT payable is because we are not going to pay the FIT. To, the FIT stands for federal income tax. We're not going to pay the federal income tax to the government yet. We will pay that to the government later. So because we're holding on to that, we owe that money to the government. Therefore, it is a liability. So we will credit FIT payable. So what are the, what are the other required deductions for employees for payroll? OSTI payable and Medicare payable. And then after that, you're going to have any optional or voluntary deductions, such as United Way payable. So United Way is a charity. So apparently some employees are taking money out of their paycheck and giving it to the United Way. And because we're not going to pay the United Way right this second when we're recording the journal entry, we have to make it a payable. Now, should this transaction balance at, the time, at this time, should gross pay equal the deductions? No, because if that was the case, then employees would not have any take-home pay. So the other payable is going to be called wages and salaries payable or wages payable or salaries payable. But the main thing you need to know is that this is net pay. So if you take net pay, add all the deductions, that needs to equal the gross pay. And the reason wages and salaries payable is a payable and inst instead of cash going down is because companies usually record the payroll entry before paychecks are given to employees. So when the pay period ends, employees are not paid on that day usually. So now let's take a look at the second journal entry. So the first journal entry was employee data. Now this one is employer data. So basically this is the employer payroll taxes. So we start with the date, of course, and our debit is going to be payroll tax expense. And at this point, we don't know what the number is. So we would leave the debit blank. So then we would list all the employer payroll taxes such as OSTI, and because payroll is not going to pay the government OSTI right away, it's going to become a payable because we will owe it to the government. So what are the other payroll taxes that the employer pays besides OSTI? Medicare. What else is there? FUTA. And of course, Suta. And at this point, 
your debits should equal your credits. So to get the debit, you're just going to add up your credits. And then the third one is everyone's favorite because it's the easiest. You're actually paying the employees on this day. So this would not be recorded at the end of the pay period. This would be recorded sometime after the end of the pay period. So we're going to lower our wages and salaries payable. And then cash gets lowered. Now, oftentimes, a company will use a separate cash account just for payroll. So it might be called cash-payroll. 